Okay, here uh, what I'm going to show, and I have this uh, compiler in advance. Also, this is in my YouTube channel. Um, basically, I want to show one of the new advantages of using Net6. This is a Blazor WebAssembly application using .NET 6. So what do we have there that is new and um, new and shiny? Well, uh, basically, you know that if you're using uh, WebAssembly, you don't need a server, basically. You can have all type of like DOM hosting um, with, with no backend processing like PHP, ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core. So you just put it in any type of file storage and it basically will work. So uh, this is a WebAssembly application again. <clears throat> so, uh, well, let me show you first the project and where the magic lies here. So uh, the project is targeting Net6. Um, you can only do this on Net6. It's impossible to do it in other Net framework. And the deal about Net6 is that you can use um these directives native references so it means that you can basically include any dll um, that uh, is compiled for web assembly so if you're into c plus plus or something like that you can compile c plus plus libraries include them as native assemblies on net6 and you can run that either on your server side or or your client side, like with, uh, basically. So uh, what happened before is like uh, we do we do have like all the Microsoft data DLLs and nuggets that uh, basically you can have those references that uh, SQLite come in one of those in Microsoft data SQLite. So all the engine runs in there, but the engine has some dependencies on a C++ library, which is basically this library here. So I will not show the complete example because you need to compile C++ in that sense. In the video that I have in YouTube, I, I do compile in, in C++ and you see that process, but you don't need that. Uh, basically, if you want to run this example, you can download it from GitHub. I will post the, the, the link there. So, okay, the magic here is like, uh, being able to include native references, right? So let's go to the code. Uh, if you see, we don't have a startup class. Why? Because this is net six. So the pattern the, of the solution or the project is different, which it kind of sucks for me because it took me time to learn the other one. So now we have to move to this more simplified uh, version. If you see, there is no even namespaces here. We just start writing code and that's it. So this is how you will usually use um, XPO on on Netcore, like using the the, the builder pattern, uh, and that will work uh, for most of the cases. But in this case, since I'm going to show like a database running on the on the browser, actually, um, that's why I commented out. But I leave it like in here because this is how I started, and this is like the recommended way unless you know how what you're doing so you can like do more advanced scenarios so in my case um i move all this code and i did it by hand um in the page so let me show you the the index of tracer this is just um a really simple ui it will be like uh, an input with a button to save and a button to download the database and and that's it and if you see the code behind uh, here I have some special uh, things. Uh, one is the local storage from Blaze Rise. Uh, if you don't know them, go and check them. They have amazing uh, functionality for Blazor. So why we use that is even if you can use uh, SQLite database inside of the browser, that's in memory. So there is no way to save it. You have it there in your RAM. But uh, once you destroy the process or you close the task, then that's gone. So I use this to actually serialize the database in memory and save it in the browser storage. So um, that's, that's one of the, the, the magic things here. And since I'm not using the pattern that I showed you before in the program that is using the extensions from XPO to inject the, the unit of work, I, I'm doing that myself. 
uh, then I'm not using this injected unit of work. Uh, before, you see, I have it there, uh, but I was injecting it um, and not anymore. So the code that I'm basically running now is the init XPO. And again, I put this for the people who download the source. This is best practice number seven, how to initialize your, your data layer. So it's a copy paste from there. I always go Google that and copy that here. And then some uh, methods. So let me show you what I do here. It's like when the index space is initialized, basically I go to the local storage of the browser and I see if the bytes array from the database are there. If it's null, it means it's the first time. So I get one that I embed here on the resources. I just did this, this will show just like an only byte array if I double click it, but uh, I just did this uh, just to do an example. If you want to provide, if you want to provide initial data, imagine that this is an invoicing system or a point of sale. Maybe you want to have some configuration already there. So that's why I did it this way. I can just do the updating memory of the schema and now it will work also. But uh, that's the way I'm doing it here to provide initial data. Then I query all the users that I have already in that database. Um, I put it in the, this is a list. Um, that's basically the initialized process. Uh, so uh, let me run this. Uh, it will take some time because uh, WebAssembly takes some time to compile. Also, if you're using native reference, it takes a little bit longer. Um, but let's, let's run this and see how it goes. Okay, so it's going to load uh, the web assembly part. It takes some time because it needs to be every, everything needs to be rendered on the on the client side. Okay, so uh, this is people from our office and my brother uh, that is not in our office, but uh, I always include him on the example. So here I can add anything like uh, SAS meetup and save it. And when I hit the save button, what I'm going to do is like basically commit the XPO transaction, and I will I think I can put a breakpoint there. Uh, save. So see if um, I create a new user, I pass the value that I get from the UI, I commit, I add it to the list so it shows uh, below in the list of users. And if I want to save it to the, well, he just commented out, uh, we have this method save to local storage. And if you see, uh, what I do is, since you're using WebAssembly in this case, you have a file system in memory. So I I do, I only use five read all bytes as, as if the file actually exists, but it doesn't exist, it's only memory. And then I read all the bytes from the, from the DB file. Uh, we created that here, see, this is the, you cannot put a path because there is no actually a file system there. You just write the file name. So uh, you do that, you get the, the bytes from the, from the file and then you, just save it in the local storage from the browser. This will not work good for really big applications. If you have like 10 gigabytes, you don't have to load a 10 gigabyte database in the browser. But if you have something like setting, uh, settings or stuff like that, it can be useful. And also it can be useful in the case that you want to do really complex queries on the client side. You can download the information from an API, save it in the database, and then do complex query joins and everything, and it will be blazing fast because everything will be client side. So, and then uh, basically, well, after saving it to the local storage, then when we start again, we, we get it from the local storage if it exists. So let me show you this here. So I will say uh, it's here. And if I download the database at this moment, uh, okay, so it's DB3 in downloads, I guess. Yeah, so. I think I have the browser. Oh, I think I'm using this one. DVD, but if you have a user, download it, it's like amazing, 
uh, is an open source uh, DB manager for multiple databases. It's based on Eclipse from Java. So really nice tool. Uh, you can connect to anything uh, that is like uh, famous. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, so let's edit one of these connections. This one. I'm going to uh, let's see disconnect and then edit. And the file name is this. Uh, let's browse for the file name. Is this one? So okay. Let's connect. Let's check the tables. And I hope that the demo effect is not trying to get me today. See, uh, this is the record. So that's what's created in the database in memory. Then we save it as a file and download it. Uh, so that's also something that is really, really useful. Um, since this is a place of WebAssembly application, it can be a progressive app. You can just run it in the, do this. Oh, no, uh, I don't have the icon here. I have the icon in, in Chrome, so let's open Chrome. This is me. And just run this here. And basically, um, let's wait for this to load. You can install this as a, as a desktop application because it's a progressive web app. So I think I have the icon on the desktop, but I'm not showing the desktop icons on my side. Let's see. How's that? Yeah. Yep. Have, have you heard that? Progressive, progressive web app. app. Have you heard that? Okay. Have you heard that progressive web app that going away? That Firefox are going to discontinue? You just kill me. You know, like like a few weeks ago, this I made this like six weeks ago, and I kind of love it. I was trying to see like how can I use it for my own purposes, like you know, like those projects that you do for for your family, for your cousin that they need something. Uh, and this just this layout seems super cool for me. And I was thinking, ah, even like this, you cannot use Xamarin sometimes if you want. But well. <laughs> I'm devastated already. So, well, anyway, uh, this one is the one running on my computer. See, the, the values on the database are different. Uh, the install icon doesn't show in here because it's already installed in my computer, but that's the beauty of, of a WebAssembly app that you can have it as a progressive web app and you can use it as a desktop application uh, or in a mobile, you can use it as a mobile application. So it gives you all the advantages of using mobile, using uh, desktop without having to write a desktop application. You get away with a single UI, which is based on WebAssembly, where you can draw basically anything. That's the beauty of Web of Blazor uh, for me, that if you want to do a pizza chart, find a pizza, uh, pizza picture and make a chart and that's it. You can draw anything there. So, well, that's everything for this, um, for this demo. I will copy the link on the chat so you can download it and play play with it on your side. The only requirement is that you need to have Visual Studio 2022 and Net6. And beside that, uh, you don't need to do anything. So uh, back to you, Javier.